In 1941, a test pilot for the Junkers company proposed the idea of using a combination of a fighter and an old unmanned bomber filled with high explosive that could be flown onto a large target such as boats, bridges, bunkers and factories. At that time there was no need for such a radical method, so the idea found little interest and was shelved for nearly two years. But in 1943 the idea took on a new dimension. A piloted Messerschmitt BF-109 fighter mounted on a top of an unmanned, explosive-laden Junkers Ju-88 bomber. This was commonly referred to as Mistel. Mistel was the large, unmanned component of the composite aircraft, which comprised a Messerschmitt Bf-109 or a Focke-Wulf 190 piloted control aircraft mounted above a large explosive carrying drone. The combination would be flown to its target by a pilot in the fighter. When he got to the target, he would put the combination into a 50 degree descent and aim the whole lot at the target. At a range of about a mile from the objective, the unmanned bomber was released to fly straight on under control of an automatic pilot to hit its target and explode, leaving the fighter free to return to base. The Mistel's warhead was a shaped charge weighing nearly two tons. The use of a shaped charge was expected to allow penetration of up to seven meters of reinforced concrete. The entire process had an air of finality about it, for once the warhead-fitted missile had taken off, the fighter pilot could not land the combination. Whether it reached the target or not, the Junkers Ju-88 component was doomed. The first such composite aircraft flew in July of 1943, and was promising enough to begin a program by the Luftwaffe codenamed Beethoven, eventually entering operational service in the summer of 1944. Some 250 Mistels of various combinations were built during the war. Initially older GU-88s were employed, but at the end they used Junkers straight from the factory. But they met with limited success. In the spring of 1945, the Red Army was messing for a break along the line of the Oder River, where for the time being they were held, though in place less than 56 kilometers from Berlin. At Küstrin they had already established a bridgehead on the West Bank, which had resisted all German attempts to throw it back. As a weapon of last resort, the Mistel combination was sent in to stop the Red Army. In the last month of the war, Colonel Hans Joachim Helbig was put in charge of the Oder Bridge attacks. He was one of the most experienced bomber pilots in the entire German Air Force. This use of Mistel combinations against bridges was a measure of desperation. For although they were potentially very effective weapons against ships and concrete buildings, they were quite unsuitable for this type of deployment. Not only was the accuracy of the Mistel inadequate for use against such long and narrow targets, but the specialized warheads could only blow holes through the bridges without damaging any vital part of the structure. Typical of the attacks on the bridges at Küstrin was that of the 12th of April 1945, when Lieutenant Hans Altrogge took off from Peenemünde 
in a Junkers GU88 to act as pathfinders for the attack. Four mystical combinations followed him, and the curious formation headed south towards the target. When Altroge arrived at Küstrin, it was dusk, then, as he passed over the bridges, he rocked his wings and climbed away. This was the cue for the Mistral pilots to push their aircraft into a 15 degree descent and go straight into the attack. The pilots pressed home their dives in the face of anti-aircraft fire, separated and then pulled away. The Junkers Ju-88s carried on and found their mark resulting in a salvo of explosions. From his vantage point, Altroge watched the bridges disappear in a cloud of smoke, mud and spray. The Focke-Wulf fighters, now separated from their cargo, became potent fighters once again, curved in to attack the flag pits, which had made things so uncomfortable for them during their attack. It was dark before the smoke cleared, making Lieutenant Altroge unable to observe the results of this strike. But from Soviet records it is known that the bridges continued in use after the attack. The Kustrin bridges had been erected by the Soviet army engineers and were of the simple pontoon type. These pontoons were easy to replace. The Soviets launched their great offensive on the 16th of April 1945 and within two days had forced two bridgeheads, one 32 km wide and one 48 km wide on the western bank of the Oder River. More and more pontoon bridges were thrown across the river and the Luftwaffe continued to use everything it had including several misters in an attempt to smash them. But such was the ferocity of the Soviet push that even when some of the crossings were temporarily put out of action, the drive was not slagged in the least. The mister combinations were simply not enough to stop the Red Army. I hope you enjoyed this episode and sure you don't miss my future work Please make sure you subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.